last one, God's capacity for quality in us. God's capacity to work a quality in you. And you will be quality, you will have quality, your relationships will be in quality, your character, <clears throat> your patterns in your brain, your emotions, they will be quality, quality. You will be quality and where you go, they will come quality. Why? If you have the faith that God has the capacity to work quality in you. But if you really believe that, you will live according to that. But if I focus on myself and I have more faith in my failures, more faith in my shortcomings, more faith in my own opinions, more faith in my insecurities, <clears throat> and I'm focusing more on that, there's no way. I will try for quality, but it will not come. And every time the quality is not there, the devil is standing there ready to condemn you. Ready to bring that condemnation in your life. Until the day that you say, I break with this in the name of Jesus Christ. And I yield myself to the Spirit. And let the Holy Spirit do a work in me. Why? Because I believe in my God that has the capacity to bring forth quality in me. It's not what you believe about yourself. It's what you believe about your God that makes you quality. Amen. Great. Let's go. <clears throat> Goodness. We've talked about the fruit of the Spirit, and we did three Sundays about love, joy, and peace. And then we did one Sunday about the other three facets. This three facets were, was, is, will be. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So we talked about the vitality God gives us, and that is driven by, led by, whether of the Lord is my strength. Okay, that's vitality that the Holy Spirit works in us. Amen, Louis. That's it. Then we talked about not vitality, but we talk about stability. And we find that stability that in all, everything we do, we do it as if unto the Lord. And we call that faithfulness. And I can go into my destiny because I understand what is laying ahead. I will stand on the watchtower and I know God was speaking to my life. And I know I'm expecting more of Him tomorrow in my life. Therefore, because of that dealings, I have Okay, I will have patience. Patience. Thank you. And the third one was self-control. Not yourself that we be in control. But God that is in control that you understand His final say in your life. You will not be controlled by your fleshly desires. All these guys say, no, I don't, will not allow somebody to control me. That's rubbish. That's either you controlling yourself or someone or your flesh or the Lord. Or the Lord and people. And people must control you. Hello. In the Lord. Because there will be a control from people somewhere. It's never you and God alone. Remember we said it's not a finger growing on the head. It's not you and the Lord. But you are somewhere in the body and there is some other form of control over you. So this finger, there is a control of, from the muscle and the tendon to this finger. This is this arm is controlled by here, but it's because of the nerve that controls the muscle and that is coming from there. Hello? So there's interaction with one another, and if I'm set free from the fears and the insecurities, from the hurts, from the disappointments in people, etc., and I walk by faith in, in understanding that I trust the Lord in you, and you trust the Lord in me, even though we still make the mistakes. God believes and He trusts in us in such a way that He identifies with us and says, I want to live in Him, I want to walk with Him, and they can use my name. He can identify to such an extent with you. Let's do it with one another. Amen. That is, if I understand stability, then I will be, my life will be in the body of Christ. And they with me. And I will understand destiny with patience. And I will do everything as if unto the Lord. Even if my boss 
does whatever to me. Whatever happens to me, I will do whatever I do as if unto the Lord. I will not give myself an excuse because I'm tempted or because I'm down or because I don't like to or because somebody did something to me, therefore I'm not going to do certain things. No. I am free to do His will. And nothing can hinder me to do His will because I'm doing it unto the Lord. And He will not fail me. Amen. So, the last three E's was vitality, stability. Now it is quality. Okay, and the last three facets are the fruit of the Spirit. Goodness, kindness, gentleness. Goodness, not oh my goodness, but yes. When people see you, they must say that. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Here comes the, Lord good, the Lord's goodness. Let's try that. Oh my, oh, my goodness. Here comes the Lord's goodness. That's what people will say when you enter a room. Amen. Amen. <laughs> May that be so in Jesus' name. <laughs> goodness. Genesis 1 verse 27. God made heaven and earth. He made the animals. He made this one. He made that one. Everybody. And he looked at it and he said, this was very good what he made. He looked at you and me in Adam and Eve. He said, this is very good. It looks like me. Because God is good. And when something starts to look like him, that is good. And nothing else is good. Because nothing else is good except God. So you want to try and find something that is good in your life? Find God. And let God enter your emotions. Let God enter the place where you need healing. Let God enter into the place of your finances and you will see the goodness of God in that area. You will see the goodness of God in your relationship with your dad, your relationship with people around you, <clears throat> where you feel he messed up. Uh -uh. He messed up, but you will, will you be a product of that? Only if you choose that it will be so. But your Father in heaven will never mess up with all respect, if you allow him and his hand strongly upon your life, he will hold you. <clears throat> Genesis 1 verse 31, then God saw everything that he had made and he did was very good. Yes, let's go on. Psalm 145 verse 7, bring forth like a fountain the fame of God's abundant goodness. That is your command, that where you work, you will bring forth that. There at your working place, there where you study, there where you will have your own business, there in your dreams, and that will become a reality. Let it be so that you will bring forth like a fountain the fame of God's abundant goodness. The fact that people will brag about His awesome goodness and that they will see that goodness, they will see that beauty of God through your life. They will see that God is good. When I look at that man, I can see that God is a good God. When I look at that woman, I know that his God, her God, is a good God. Because look at the goodness that is shining forth in her. And that is not everything. It's just honky-dory and everything that's just <clears throat> rolling in the money. But it's like that, that lady has the capacity that in spite of all the things, she can blossom, she can stand, she's content. She's fulfilled. She has joy. She has peace. Wow. That's only a God that can work that in that lady. It's only a God that can work that in a man. Amen? I'm talking about that. That beauty. That that things around cannot touch that person. Your struggles, the intimidations, the, the things that want to come against you, will not touch you. You will stand in the beauty of God. <clears throat> Something is good if he declares God's glory. God gives us that standard through the working of the Holy Spirit in us. Galatians 5.22. That's the fruit of the Spirit. So what you ever do, what you will do, what you will create in your business, if the definition of God's goodness is not there, it's gonna, it will fall. It will becoming a curse, it will be consumed with fire. It will burn down. 
it will have no eternal value. Now you can say, but uh, I mean, you can in any case not take your business to heaven as if that has eternal value. No, what you can take with is that through your business, people were developed, people found God. And you take your business to heaven, but in your business there were 20 people or 100 people. You say you have, you have an excellent business. I hope that you are, you know, that principle is good um, from government, uh, job creation. <coughs> that is when you have business that has an impact on others. The church is supposed to be in that business. If the church walk with God, and God has commanded people to work, and that He will bless them as they work, as He is working, and we must do the works that He is doing and do the work with Him. Amen? <coughs> if we do that, He is into job creation. Now, nah. So you be led by the Spirit, the goodness of God will come into the place. And the people will stand back and say, you know, the churches just have the wisdom. We as government and we as these people or that people, we must go and hear and we must draw from the wisdom in the church. Because they know how to create jobs. Why? Because the goodness of God is working in them and through them. And they're working with that standard. <clears throat> get, let's get beyond ourselves into this place of understanding the impact that God wants to have through us. There is also a work that is good according to the standard of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You know about the tree? It's a tree where the snake was having his habitation, okay, in the Garden of Eden, and the snake didn't say, oh, zzzz, love for money. Yes, that, all that things came. But what was it? The snake wanted them to be tempted to look at something that is good and what is bad according their own, to their own understanding. Not according to the standard that God has, but according to their own reasoning. You know? So therefore I will dismiss Christians because they make a lot of a mess. Good and evil. There's evil. There's things, there's flesh that can rise up. And you can justify yourself together with the snake at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And you find people out there, they live much better than some Christians. <coughs> some Muslims, some Buddhists, some atheists, some just whoever. They can even be better than a lot of Christians. But if the root is still from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil... What a waste. And it's a shame on the church then that the church didn't come and help them to, for their eyes to be opened so that they will bring forth the quality of goodness where God is seen in that goodness, where the heart of heaven is seen in that goodness, where God's goodness is seen in your relationships, in the relationships that you are entering in with, with that guy, with that lady. And they must treat you accurately. They must treat you so that your preciousness will come forth. Amen. <clears throat> let's go who how are you when people will ask you how are you do you answer people and yourself according to God's standard or the snake's standard the snake the standard of the snake because what will you all first say I mean it's just part of the what's the word you just just the opening sentence just at least to start a conversation you know and then you ask, so how is it really going? And then <coughs> people be could become, maybe, could become honest. And then, oh, you know, this is happening or that is happening or that. But in all honesty, it can be excellent also. But then after the honesty, you must go into the place of truth. <coughs> Where you not just state the facts of how it's going, but the truth of what is God doing. The facts are, <laughs> I mean, the fire. <clears throat> and he's going rough, and there's intimidation, and I'm feeling this, and I'm feeling that, and I, don't, I feel I don't want to even go on. I just want to quit on this and that and that and that. That is honesty, but the truth is, and that truth is setting me free while all these things are happening. <clears throat> and the truth is that God is doing a great work in me. His goodness is being established in me. His goodness, His hand is on my life, and I'm allowing Him to do that in my life. And the key is, are you allowing God to bring forth His goodness? Are you allowing Him to bring forth 
His goodness in you. Amen. Ephesians 2.10 says, We are His workmanship created for the good works that He prepared for us in advance to do. Amen. So God has good works for you. He has quality works where heaven will be seen in what you do. What your hand, what it touches, it brings forth something from heaven. Let it be so. What you do, heaven is in it. What you study and what you say, heaven must be in it. In Jesus' name. And we say this to one another and we decide this here, <coughs> not to go in condemnation, but to say, we take this as a faith step. So even if I would say this 200 times, <coughs> why, sorry, why are we stating that? Why are we taking it by faith? Because the more we make that decision by faith, we will overcome. We will. More and more we're making that decision. You know, when you fall into certain temptation and you make the decision <coughs> to steal something, and you type of repent, but next time you make that decision again. And the more you make that decision, the more you become bound. And the more you attract demons. <coughs> and the more you are bound by demons at the end of the day. With this demon of destruction over your life. But you know, ten, so ten much more, hundred times more. When you make the decision with God, <coughs> it's drawing His Spirit and His Word. And the life from heaven. And you could maybe fall back a little bit. But make that decision and keep on making that decision. Because you will walk with the control of God over your life. Don't quit in making that decision. Even though you feel, you know, it didn't work lo last time. That guy that stole. You know, it didn't really work last time. So I'm really discouraged. You know, to steal again. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's just going to try again. You know? Are you with me? Because some way he's going to succeed. Now, if that guy can have the faith for the negative, how much more with the Holy Spirit and with the Word of God we're supposed to have the faith in the positive? That you can make that decision and even you make that over and over and over and over again and more and more and more from God will be there in your life. Amen. Next one. Allow him who has begun a good work in you to complete it. Philippians 1, 6. For those who write down, overcome evil with good. Not like good ideas, not out of yourself, but with the goodness of God. Because that's light that, when you bring in the light, the darkness must flee. Must flee. But focus on the evil and yet you are fearing that you will fall into that evil again. No, just find something good to do. You with me? You fear that you will fall with that lady again? Just do something good, you know? Take her and go and care in a group. Go and enjoy people in a, in a setting of a group. Don't find yourself in a place where you're not supposed to be. Just do something good with a lady. Because otherwise you are doing something evil. And she is not evil, so don't put evil on her. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Okay, so who gave away the bananas? A few. A few gave some bananas away. Now we must later hear some testimonies. For those who don't know, we said you must take 20 bananas, you must go to people, and you must tell them, here is a banana for you, just to remind you, you don't come from a baboon. You are made in God's image. Enjoy your banana, but you didn't come from a baboon. That is baboon theology. Understand, you are coming from God. You are precious in His sight. You are made in His image. Boom. So some of you did that. It's okay. Um... Maybe some of you must try that again. And maybe in December, go and give some people some bananas and tell them they don't come from a baboon. Okay. Tell your neighbor, take the challenge, man. Don't be a sissy. <laughs> okay. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Brag about your father's capacity for quality in everything. My God can do whatever He wants, and He wants to do a great work in me, and He shall do a great work in me. Why? Because I will allow Him, I will give over to Him, and it will be great. My future is great because my God is doing a great work in my life, and He has the capacity, and I will allow Him to do that. Amen. Amen. Next point. Next one is kindness. That goodness in His roots has to do with the kindness. Friendlicate. Friendlicate. 
um, <laughs> not my old translation of gastvrijheid. Als gastvrijheid is uh, hospitality. Hospitality. Kindness is part of the hospitality of God. That is the quality in your life. The quality is when that is worked in you, there's such room in your life for others to come close. People are attracted by your heart. People are attracted by your, your hospitality, that they feel they can be welcome with you. They feel comfortable with you. Hello? But okay, you can also so walk in the flesh that you can only hear the enemies voice and if you are so walking with the enemy and so much with a demon of lust and the demon of rubbish whatever that thing doesn't feel comfortable in the presence of a christian that is going full out with god and you will have to distinguish between the two because you will have to let this hand go for you to feel welcome in the church welcome in the cell welcome with the word Welcome with Christians or thinking that you are welcome with God. For that you need to leave this hand or this demon that will never, ever, ever feel welcome with God. So walk with a spirit of intellectualism, with a spirit of reasoning, spirit of criticism, spirit of, of judging, spirit of doubt. Walk with that things and you will never, ever feel welcome wherever. But choose to say, I will be willing to let go and let God because if I can let go, I can receive from God. But if I cannot let go, I cannot receive from Him what He wants to give me. Hey, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. I've drawn you with my hospitality. That's Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Met my friendlichkeit. So you're supposed to draw people to Christ with your friendlichkeit, with your hospitality. Not the fake one that we can have, you know, or the plastic you know, Christian Tupperware, you know, on your face. But when they are gone, you think, oh, if that guy comes again, you know, or somebody comes and says, oh, Lord, help me. Yeah, and how are you? Now, that is what you can choose by faith in Jesus' name. And don't say then that's fake, that you must now be audible. Now, you can choose that by faith. And you, then you are genuine by faith. By faith. And you walk by that faith, not by fake. Don't walk by fake, but walk by faith. Tell that to your neighbor. Amen. So that your kindness can be genuine. I mean, how many of you have seen kindness... And some people that are friendly and this and this. But you know it's fake. You just know it's from a distance. Yeah. Okay. Philippians 4 verse 5. Let all men. Let all men. Everybody say all men. All men. Know and perceive and recognize your unselfishness. Your considerateness. Your forbearing spirit. In Afrikaans he says... Jelle vriendelijkheid. Laat jelle vriendelijkheid aan allemaal bekend worden. Let your kindness be known to all. Goeder tierenheid. Het van dit... Ja, ja, ja. There is some of that, but there is some of the other words also with goeder tierenheid. But yes, yes. Okay. Amplified. Romans 11 verse 22. You are going to read it. Okay? Don't lie. Go and read it. Next one. The last one. Gentleness. Gentleness. Like we said, this is for the softies. Oh. This is for those who have the guts to believe that they don't have to prove anything to others, that they will stand their ground and they will, but in meanwhile, they are just falling for everything, falling for the tantrums and throwing a tantrum and you have your own emotions and your own way of Closing yourself down and having your own personality as a facade, is that the word? A facade, yeah. Something like that. Nearly like a palisade, ne? Palisades. Ne? Yeah. Nearly the same. Okay. So gentleness, we're talking about gentleness. We look at the, uh, the attitudes in 
Matthew 5. And he talks about blessed are the poor in spirit because they will inherit the kingdom of God. Now the poor in spirit is not the achsist. The poor in spirit is the guys that understand that they are poor in spirit. Blessed are you who are honest and humble. That you have the humility to have the guts to be honest about your situation, where you are at and where not, where you are lonely, where you are empty, where certain things in rejection work, where you are just trying to fill it yourself with an image. But the bigger the image, the bigger the hole. Hello. You have an emptiness in you, you want to cover it up. And the more you cover it up, the more empty it becomes. You with me? Blessed are the ones that walk with humility and honesty. The kingdom, the seed of the kingdom. The kingdom means the king that has the final say in you. I have received the seed to understand what is the king saying in me. That is, I've inherited the kingdom. I've inherited a place where the king can speak. I, I've come into a place where the king can speak. The king can speak here. And when the king can speak here, I'm blessed. Amen. When the, I allow the king to speak here, and the king is here, his voice, the voice of the king is here, because I've inherited the kingdom. Why? Because I humbled myself and lay myself down at the cross of Christ. Because I had the guts of honesty to realize these things are not right in my life. Amen? So with that, the second beatitude, so that I can come into a place of true brokenness, not, not moan and groan in Klani. Ne? Blessed are the... That's the third one. Can you not see that? <laughs> Blessed are those who mourn. Not moan, mourn, mourn, mourn. Blessed are those who mourn. Okay, because they will be, they will be mourned. No, <laughs> they will be comforted. Yo. Oh, they will be comforted. Yeah, it is like that. Some moan and then other mo one, the others moan with them. No. Blessed are those divatrier. Divatrier. But what is it actually? They mourn about what they've done wrong and that they come into a place of true repentance with their hearts. People that come with brokenness and repentance that will receive healing in their hearts, a wholeness in their life so that they can free to be free to live what God has for them and not be a product of their past or their circumstances or their flesh or their weaknesses. Amen? Amen? Gentleness then can be formed based on that basis of humility and honesty, brokenness, repentance. Now we come into a place of where we can receive gentleness. Blessed are the meek, that is the gentle. For they shall inherit the earth. We think inheritance, inherit the earth is like, whoa, you're the man of power for the hour. But no, inherit earth is not how many ground you have. It's not how you can fight. It's not having all these things. But the guy that has the guts to be teachable. Teachable and flexible. Because you don't have to prove anything. So you can sit here and you can sit with people and you're not reasoning. You're sitting here and you're immediately reasoning in your mind, yeah, but, yeah, but. Why? There's some fear. There's something happening in there. Don't allow that thing to take away from you what God has for you tonight. Amen? But take a breakthrough for your life. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit earth. Inherit the earth. That's your promise from God. You will inherit the earth if a new world is created on earth as it is in heaven. Only if you are teachable, flexible, then you can receive. And God says, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. The yoke is easy, the burden is light. So what does it mean? He is gentle. If he is gentle and humble in heart, that's all these principles. And the yoke will be easy, the burden will be light for you to inherit earth. Because there's an inheritance on this earth for you. But how will you take it? By creating a new world. 
on this earth. Why? Because there's a world where God hates that world, and you need to turn your back on that world. And there's a world that God loves. Are you with me? There's a world that God loves. There's a world that He hates. And if you're in that world, and you're part of that world, you cannot receive His love. You cannot work with Him. You cannot walk with Him. Because that world is controlled by hell. But there's the other world that is a dream from heaven. And God, for God so loved His dream. For God so loved His dream world that He gave His only begotten Son. So that on earth it can become as it is in heaven. So that God's dream in heaven can become a reality on earth. Amen. But for that, I need to let go of the world that is controlled by hell, that is giving me hell, and I will give it hell because I fight against this world. But I'm giving them hell, and I'm giving people hell, and they are giving me hell. And my circumstances, and it's just like me fighting hell and hell fighting me. Uh-uh. If I can turn away from that and focus on how will I bring forth what is in the heart of the Father. But for that, come to know your Father. Get into the Word. Get in prayer. Come to people. Go with brothers and sisters and spiritual leaders and talk to them about the Father's heart. Talk to them about the heart of God. Amen? Get into the play, that place to be discipled. Get a coach. Many of you would know the fact of having a coach. But make sure you have a coach that will coach you into the depths of his heart so that you can live the dream that he has for you so where i go on earth i must create that what is from heaven i must create a world that is from heaven i must create a space where god wants to live where he would want to dwell where he would decide you know the place that pete and sonny and cornelius and johan is creating that is a place where i would love to live that is for me more than heaven. That is his dream. That is more than heaven. That he will create on earth. Amen. You with me? Let's go for it. Yes. Give birth to a new world on earth. Okay? That, that Romans 8 talks about creation that are in birth Pangs. Can you do it? Not birth pains. Birth pangs. Um, and we are also in labor for the manifestations of the sons of God. We are in labor. Now, some of you guys here can tell us a lot about that. Hey. <laughs> we <are laughs> and they say labor is not just a fairy tale. And it's not just, hallelujah, come my baby. You know, it's not just that. But we want our Christian walk like that. You know, sing a song Sunday, and I gave myself when I sang the song. And everything must just be fine out there now. You know, because I made the decision. Somebody made a decision to have a child. But when it comes, um, yeah. You cannot, the only thing that you can decide then is to have an abortion. Are you with me? The only thing that you can decide then is to have an abortion. The easy way out. When me and you... You are walking with God, but sometimes it's just like, no, this is too heavy. And you abort the processes of that, what God is doing, and what He wanted to do in your life. Why will you abort the processes of what God wants to do in your life? Don't facilitate abortion, but bring forth what God has for you. Amen. From a place of meekness, from a place of gentleness, there it will happen. God must be welcome with us in Canaan. That is your destiny. That is provision. Otherwise, we have not inherited earth. It's not how many land or how many finances or whatever you can have. That means that now you have Canaan. No. You have inherited Canaan when God's world is created in Canaan. Amen? When God's world and His dream is created in your business, in what you do, in that school, in that place where you will work, then yes, you are busy inheriting earth. If you have no impact in that business where you are working, you are not inheriting earth. 
Because somewhere you're not teachable and flexible for that what God has for you. But if you are teachable and flexible, you will inherit. You will inherit part of that hospital, part of that business, part of that. Why? It's the place where you, when you come in, people recognize that. And the presence of God is there. Amen? Amen? Amen. There's a world that God will judge that will be burnt up by fire and that won't be able to receive Him. And that world is there and that world will put tribulation against you. But there's a world in that same world where God is sending you. We are in the world but not of this world. Okay, we are in that world, John 17, but we are not of this world. But God is sending us in that world to create a new world. God is sending us in the world to create a world as it is in heaven. But for that, you need relationship with Him. You need to see His heart. You need to see from Him. You need to find strategy from Him. So that what He has, the world that is in heaven, in His heart, you will take that and put it on earth, in your world. And then that place is where you have as an inheritance. Amen? You create that in your family. You know, your inheritance, your children will inherit that. Why? Because they have that quality from heaven in their lives because you've deposited that in their lives. You've deposited it in your children, in your marriage, in their children. And so your work will stand. Amen. Amen. The world is crucified to me and I'm to the world. As I just boast in the cross, Galatians 6 verse 14. Then Matthew 28 says, Go and make disciples of all the nations. Go and make disciples of all the nations. What does that mean? Go and bring a heavenly world on earth which, God's lo- which God loves. Bring the world on earth because I love that world and I want that world and I'm excited about that world because that world is my dream. That world is more than heaven. That is what I dreamt when I saw heaven. I dreamt about that what is more. Dream, a dream is that what does, that does not exist yet. Nah. A dream is something that does not exist yet. So God dreamt about a world. God dreamt about that what didn't exist yet. And that is a world that we will create for Him. Me, you, and Jesus Christ for our Father. So that it will become our Father's home. Amen. Amen. A world that becomes His home here on earth. Let it be so that your dad, your father can be so welcome in the place that you are busy creating. You know, when somebody don't have necessarily this relationship with their father, and they come into this relationship with their father, and and it will be so much for them just to have that acknowledgement from their father, for their father to say, wow, I'm proud of you, and you've done such a good work. I just want to come and live here. Hello? And that is what we have. That's the opportunity we have to create such a world in and through you and your relationships where God can come, your father can come and say, yes, my son, yes, my daughter. I have a desire to live among you and in you and with you as my home. God, come and change us. We trust you for that. Holy Spirit, show us. Show us how to live. Let's stand before the Lord. Garden, where many of us didn't experience a home of goodness and meekness and gentleness, kindness, Lord. We, forgi- we have forgiven our parents, we have forgiven ourselves, we have forgiven brothers and sisters, people, where that quality was not created in our homes, Lord. And even with us as parents, that we, we failed many times in creating this atmosphere of goodness and kindness and gentleness. God, we want to change. We need a touch of your gentleness, your kindness on our lives. If you are standing here and life was hard, life was hard and you had to fight and you have this fight inside of you to fight and to break through with life, but it's the strain that you experience in life. 
and that the yoke is not easy, the burden is not light, and you need that breakthrough, I want you to come to the front right now. I want to pray for you. I want the leaders to pray for you that you will experience the yoke that is easy, the burden that is light, the gentleness so that that battle can leave you. That battle can leave you. I want you to come right now. You know you need to come. Just come. Come. Tonight you're laying down that battle in the name of Jesus Christ. You have the guts to come and to say, I'm living down this laying down this battle goodness gentleness meekness will be part of my life in jesus name father i pray even for that one or two that's supposed to come that you will help him to make just that decision it's not about us praying for you first of all it's about you making that quality decision as yes we all make this decision to come into a place of kindness and goodness and gentleness and god forgive us where all of us fall short in that areas. But if you know you need that breakthrough tonight, as He wants to draw you with that loving kindness, as He wants you to inherit earth, as you need to see how you break through to bring heaven on earth, as you know that you need a breakthrough, you are not having that breakthrough to bring God's dream on earth. If you need a specific breakthrough to bring God's dream on earth I want you to come I thank you for that Father that you just created among us in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name